hi guys uh looking forward to chatting about this one because they're always great they're always fun this one caught me on the hop and i'll tell you why i didn't expect it to be quite so emotional uh that is incredibly sweet of you to say thank you i'm glad you glad you dug it yeah it was it's it's all the fun as always but there were some really tender moments so before we get into all the fun and frolics and, and beach stuff and apologies for not having a beach background because i can't get the green screen to work um what what instigated the the thought process to to put these quite genuinely touching little moments in or did it just happen organically I, it, it you know it does tend to happen organically as you're sort of telling a story and 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 stories are about characters and their choices they make and and how that resonates emotionally um i will confess those moments i mean this sounds a little braggy is it's something that i helped make but like they choke me up too um and i think some of that comes from looking at this story and looking both at the kind of big overarching story with finn but also the, within those stories is like we were talking when we originally were kicking around this idea of doing a summer vacation special some of it summer vacation is like there is a, a finality to summer vacation and then as a kid you go back to school or summer camp is over you know, some of my best friends are still my summer camp friends, but there's that moment when summer camp is over. And I think those start, those are, those can be sort of bittersweet moments and they, they are yeah. certainly kind of before and after times and, and they resonate. So we, so we, when we found them, they were there as opposed to shoving them aside. We just thought they belong in the story. They, they, they belong there organically. Let's bring them in. It does feel like Lego Star Wars has I mean, it's been around forever now at this point. Lego Star Wars as a physical thing has been around 23 years as an animated thing. Not quite that long, but not far off. So with what you do now within the realms of Lego Star Wars, it feels like it's become its own thing that you can, of course, pick from where you want to pick things from. But does it feel like that to both of you? Does it feel like it is now its own almost unique little corner of the Star Wars universe? What do you think, Ed? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I mean that's one of the nice things about like the like the term canon adjacent is the one yeah. David likes to use a lot in yeah. reference to it, and it just frees you up a little bit. It gives you a little bit of permission. I mean, to go places you couldn't go with you know the, the mainline stuff, and like that's that's really a lot of fun. And we're all like everybody on the team is, you know, a huge Star Wars fan, so. Yeah, it's uh, it's just great to be able to kind of do that because it's all going to going to come from a genuine place of love, right? And and I think to your point, Mark, and, and this really is credit <clears throat> to people who did the original video games and 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 the early specials too. Um, there was a voice and a tone that's sort of been set up, and they, there is something that feels right. You sort of know what a Lego Star Wars joke, what a Lego Star Wars moment feels like and they and they are they do get yeah. to be their own thing while very much existing and and being reverential to the star wars universe and obviously using all that material and getting to be their own thing and you know it was sort of exciting exactly to your point when we were doing this special we brought back two characters from pre-maker adventures for example you know we sort of knew in those stories we knew particularly in the obi-wan story we wanted a rebel and we thought oh wait we have we have valeria from pre-maker there's she could absolutely be in this story and so we wrote it to her and um to bring wick cooper back like they those they yeah. those characters were created in freemaker adventures exist in that universe and it was sort of nice to have them in in this universe again yeah it's nicely played in the sense that in the past star wars has done humorous stuff with other franchises and ips if you like you know obviously family guy and robot chicken and stuff like that but for 2022 not just 2022 the last few years i'd say it does feel like lego star wars has become the best venue to tell these nod wink smile warm humorous star wars stories that must give you both a lot of satisfaction I, I, absolutely and i mean i you know i look i i star wars and humor i grew up on mad magazine even going all the way back to the you know unofficial parodies and stuff it, I, I love it and i do think you know it, it always comes out of that place of love we do as ken said we all do love star wars and and there is a way to do this kind of lighter side and and silly moments that that feel right yeah with this particular storyline now we're in the era of galactic star cruisers so you had the opportunity to tell a story that takes place on the halcyon 
Ken, for you as a director, how did that feel having this new platform, this new area to go and explore and tell stories within as a physical space? Oh, it's just so much fun, right? And I mean, I guess like, you know, uh, really where that like shines for me is like, you know, because you always have these like, you're, you know, you're trying to be professional and do your job and, you know, make it cool and stuff. But you, they're just always just moment where you just turn into a fanboy, <laughs> you know, like in the case of this, you know, like we, we got um, access to the the production design that was being done, you know, uh, you know, which Doug Chang was involved with, you know, so it's always, oh my, you know, <laughs> Doug Chang, um, you know, uh, so it's, yeah, that's the joy of it for me is like, you just, you get this material and, you know, you just, get, you turn into a little geek for a moment to like, I turned 10 again, you know, um, because I was 10 years old when the first film came out and I yeah. went to the theater, you know, like 20 times and you could sit through like multiple showings and you'd all just sit there. Yeah, so that that for me is like the brilliance of of these projects and th this one in particular, like it, because it was sort of being worked on while we were working on it. So to right. like see those, to know that those two things were sort of going in tandem is really cool. And And, and to also get to see what, Ken's team and the design team, and they were working with the folks in Billund at Lego to see like yeah. what is the Legoized version of this look. You know, all the rest of us is you know Ken's crew is working on, it, and then we have our weekly meeting. We're like, whoa, you know, th there's just that. There's again, I you sort of take off your producer hat and put on your fan hat and just go, wow, <laughs> it's, it's it's fun on on my end as well. So when you get the layout for that vehicle, can I assume that that like down to deck plans and the whole thing that's designed you you could essentially go anywhere on that ship if you wanted to it was it was laid out to be a fully designed vehicle i uh, we i mean we just designed the things that we needed in the you know in the special uh yeah. just more at a time than anything else uh you know and then in terms of like a, a design layout thing like it, it doesn't always necessarily you don't always want to have that stuff worked out in a way that you know makes linear sense you want it you know like i start to think about screen direction and yeah. you know like how one scene is going to lead into the other in terms of which way the characters are going you know you know, so you kind of want that stuff to make sense too so like that becomes a a thing you're thinking about when you're working on the design so my art director kevin chai and i will you know sit down early on and I'll kind of talk through the staging stuff like you know i get david's wonderful script and i start to like do little staging sketches uh, where i want the characters to be and kevin and i start to talk about what the physical ramifications of that are and yeah, yeah. so we, you start to think about the things not just from like oh it makes sense to flow this way within a practical space but how is it going to flow on screen and in the last few years certainly since force awakens Within the scope of the larger Star Wars galaxy, canon or canon adjacent either, you've, we've folded in places like Takadana, for example, and then with Galaxy's Edge, we folded in Galaxy's Edge through comics and other storylines, and now we've got the Halcyon. So how soon did you guys know that that when you're, and I assume, as soon as you finish one production, you're spitballing ideas for the next one, how soon did you know that playing on the Halcyon, if you want to put it that way, was an opportunity for you? How soon did you know that? Yeah, no. Well, Mark, you've got the process right. Like we're 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 spitballing really by the end of the. We're still in production on the second as we roll in the third. So we knew we wanted to do a summer vacation special. We we landed on that pretty quickly, and we knew we wanted the gang to be on a vacation together. And 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 I I, I truthfully don't remember. Someone from Lucasfilm said, "Well, we have this." I don't even think. I'm not sure the Halcyon had been announced yet. If it had. It was early, but anyway, they said we have this, we have this cruise ship, and we went. Well, that's a that's a perfect vacation. So you know, we're sort of spitballing. Where could they go on vacation? Maybe they go to Hawk. Well, that didn't feel very summery. And so that that came. Somebody said it very early, like we have this thing, and we were like, oh, that's great. Um, it was also it was a way to have them go on vacation together, to see them doing some fun stuff together. But also, we knew the story was sort of asking to kind of split the team and put them off in their separate ways, so we could follow Finn on his journey. And a, and a cruise ship's a really nice setting. It's kind of a an easy place to kind of send people off on their way so it, it it really once someone suggested it early on it served the story really well and we just we went for it you've been very fortunate again to have some great guest voice roles in this one um everybody knows who's in there how much of a joy is it to work with not only 
the, the name people, name people, you know, like Billy D or Anthony Daniels or folks like that, but other people who inhabit roles that other people have played before, but bring their own spin to it. How enjoyable is it just to make that all work as a cocktail? That's, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just pleasure, right? Like... Yeah. What's super fun is they, everybody brings, they actually they all get that they're doing their Legos that, that, that we're going for something that is in the Lego world and that we're doing their spin on it. So even the legacy characters, Billy D, Kelly, Kelly Marie Tran for short, you know, like would give kind of a, she would do sort of a funny spin on Rose that, that was a little different, it, that fits really well in the Lego universe. I'll put it that way. Um, yeah. And then, you know, so, or, or James Arnold Taylor, who's been voicing Obi-Wan through the Clone Wars and all the video games, like he knows he's doing a slightly funnier Lego version of that. And so it very much honors that character and is that character and then gets to be its own thing. And then we have this incredible guest cast like that we got Weird Al and that you've had Nicole Brown yeah. and Thomas Lennon came back and redid their roles that the, the, the Paul F. Tompkins like was hilarious he was so funny Ashley Birch like we just we kind of kept going oh my gosh we 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 get these people and they are so game they get what we're doing and and they are so fun and just willing to to do kind of anything yeah, great, great Weird Al song, but I've got to say, if Gamma Rian Girls doesn't get played at Galaxy's Edge for real, there's something wrong, because <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> that, thank you. That was that was a really fun one to do. And, I, you know, like, the, the lyrics sort of barely existed, and, and we said to our composer, Michael Kramer, we want, like, a summer jam. And and he just found this thing, and, and a little bit of trivia, that's his wife as Cy Snoodles, and nice, she was fantastic. So without giving anything away, because I don't want to know, I love being surprised by these things. You mentioned that you're already spitballing ideas because you've got to, because the process is not a five minute job. So are you already in process for working out what comes next? Have you sort of chewing ideas around? And how, because there's always stuff happening in the Star Wars galaxy, in storylines, in reality, like a physical galactic Star Cruiser thing, how soon can you start of stop throwing these all into the big, uh, into the pot? Yeah, well, there's nothing planned at the moment. I can I can say that much. There's nothing planned at the moment. Um, but the fact that you and everybody else seems to respond and really love these, like keep putting it out in the universe is is all I can totally. Say. Keep, totally keep 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 putting it out in the universe. So yes. is that, Ken, does that you sound about it? You yeah, guys yeah. need to do wacky races. You've got to do. You've got to do your own version of wacky races. That's what you need to do. That's a there you go. Well done. I love it. Mark, that's fantastic. Well, David always has pitched like an Arbor Day special, which I'd love to do. And then I'd I'd like to do a Gonk Troy series. Oh yes. Uh, you know, and then of course there's Emperor and Vader. I think I've always thrown out the idea in meetings I, I would love to see that series <laughs> I, I agree I, I just just to say I write for starwars.com and I've just written an article saying why I believe that I would follow the Lego Emperor Palpatine over the real Emperor Palpatine and I made a very convinced I believe a very convincing argument for why that should be done so uh, hats off to you I think that's a great idea I'm dying to see that is, is, you, right. have you is the article up yet it's not up yet it should be up very okay. soon fingers crossed all right that's, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I've mentioned this on a bunch of interviews, but like all hail Michael Price, who was the writer on the original animated stuff, like he found that relationship and it is, there are certain things when you were writing that are just, it's all fun. And then there are things like that. You're just like, this is such a joy. And then you hear these guys get in the booth and just crush it. And it's, so I, I'm, I'm glad you love it. It's, 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 it is, it is a fun, really fun relationship to see. It's just hilarious. Brilliant. Well, it's been a joy for us. We've absolutely loved watching it, and and fingers crossed, like we say, fingers crossed for more. There so keep it keep it coming, and we'll we'll definitely put it out into the galaxy. And make sure people uh, shout loud about it. Thank you, Mark. That's awesome. Thank you. Right, thanks. Brilliant. Cheers. <laughs>